getting away from the telephone video for a while and getting onto the Sony because I need to start preparing for this EV adventure. Two more weeks. I have to learn a lot with this camera to get some top quality video EV adapter charging shots. I don't know where I was going with that. Welcome everybody to a probably what's going to be a fairly long work week. I'm trying to put in as many hours as possible. I still don't have access to my car. Steph's car, Chevy Bolt, is still at the Chevy dealership getting fixed. Not only, you, you got to be really careful when you're replacing the batteries in these EVs. Never ground out the positive. Not only do you have that fuse that's part of the positive cable, that uh, can blow out and cost you like $200 or $150. It also will mess up your motherboard, which is what happened. We replaced everything, replaced the battery, replaced that, that whole harness with the fuse on it. Now we had to also place a special order, as the cat jumps down, to uh, replace the entire motherboard. I guess one of the units on the motherboard got fried and instead of replacing the one little sensor, they just said it's easier to replace the whole motherboard. It's probably, it, it is easier. It's more expensive, more money in their pocket. But if their technician was any good, he could just on solder the part, take it off and put a new one on. But no, they'd rather charge the $500 or whatever it is for the new motherboard and pay for the mechanic to reinstall everything. It, it's, it's getting a little bit outrageous, like two grand total with everything that has been going on between the battery, the cord, the, the, the thing that you put on the battery terminal for the positive and an entire motherboard. It's just, uh, it's still simple to do. You could do it just like any other regular car. Just uh, make sure you don't ground it out. You know, that's, that's my advice. But I should be getting my car back hopefully Tuesday or Wednesday and we'll be able to go out and do some more testing locally. Hopefully, if I can get time off from work, it's just been busy. I think I'm breaking 100 hours this week. I'm going to have a lot of overtime. And I'm kind of hoping next week is the same way so I can get ahead far enough in bills to be able to take this journey. Right, that's, that's the plan anyway. Vines. Stuff that carries juice. For our EVs. Stephanie got her... Chevy Bolt out of the Chevy dealership today. All the repairs are done, motherboards put in, battery put in properly, wires put in properly. And uh, it's, it's taken about a week. Well, it's since the hurricane. It's been whenever the hurricane was, a week or two ago. Finally, $1,100 emptier in the pockets. And, uh, but she's got her car. And it will be the first time I have been able to drive my car since the hurricane which I'm excited about, but she left my car at the Chevy dealer. So she went and got her car, came over to get me, left mine at the dealership. Now I, she's got to take me back to the Chevy dealership to pick up my Nissan Leaf. <sighs> she just, she was just too excited. She had to get her car. And me, well, I'm excited to go to chargers and uh, start using that adapter and testing it out a little bit more before the trip in two weeks. Well, I may not need to do a 2,000 mile or 6,000 mile or 10,000 mile trip. This week, she put some miles on. Would you look at that? Trip A, she put on 1,155 miles while I was gone in Miami. While she was using my car while hers was in the shop. She definitely put you through the paces, girl. I'm sorry. I'll never let it happen again. Never again. Getting back from home, or getting back home really late due to the distances I have to travel it makes it kind of nice. When I get home, it is cool. It's like 71 degrees outside. Let's go check out the pool. I just did a garbage run. It's still pretty early. It's like 8 o'clock or something like that. Just cook dinner. That's what's really weird is cooking dinner. It's something I don't normally do. Normally I eat at restaurants because I'm a truck driver and my dining options are limited to fast food most of the time. It's kind of nice coming home more often 
and having a full-on kitchen at home where you can actually cook. It's kind of nice. When we first got here to Clearbrook RV Resort, I wasn't that impressed. I mean, honestly, you know, given a little bit of break due to the hurricane that just came through, but, and everything's flooded. We have actually alligators swimming in the streets and on the golf course because the golf course is now a huge lake. But I really didn't think too much of it, especially where they stuck us. But kind of walking around and seeing the amenities, I get it. It's, it's actually really nice. Oh, come on, go. Go, go. There we go. Supposedly there are numerous pools on the property. This is just the large one. But there's more than one pool. Or is in bathroom over yonder. I'm assuming that's laundry. This building here has pool tables, ping pong, and everything else. And if you're so inclined, they even have a wood shop. Yeah. You could pretend you're back in high school. We're only here for like one more week, and then we move back to where I'm from in Wildwood, Florida, for one week, and then we head on down the Sherwood Forest, which is in Kissimmee, Florida, right next to Walt Disney World. Never stayed there before. It'll be a first. Kind of excited about that. But all in all, this place doesn't look too bad. Seems like they got us in a decent section. It's just at the moment, you know, there's still hurricane stuff. There's remnants. I mean, there's a ginormous lake back there where there shouldn't be one. Alligators swimming everywhere. No raccoons, though. No raccoons. The one thing I'm happiest about is I got my car back, and Steph got her car back. Oh. We are just lucky we have redundancy. We have two vehicles. It makes life a little bit easier and a little bit... You still stress, but not as much as you would if we only had one car. Because her job is her car. to be using dial-up. It has been a long 16-hour day. But for the first day, I mean, not the first day, but for the first time in a week, I'm back in my car. Oh, things are looking good. Something I've been able to do is, since I paid for like a premium service of Leaf Spy, I don't have to use it on either of my phones. It just works right over the Leaf's infotainment center. And uh, it works pretty good. I know I need to go get charged real fast. But I could pull it up and it gives a pretty accurate once it catches up here. A little bit slower than the cell phone, obviously. But um, it does work. Once I start driving, I guess everything will come on. But uh, yeah, Leaf Spy on the Infotainment Center, wirelessly and uh, without any cell phone. As long as you, as long as your OBD2 adapter is Wi-Fi, it'll connect to your Infotainment Center on the Leaf. It works great. It's just one of those days when you get off work around midnight at night and have to go charge your car. something I've missed. I mean, I'm going to definitely get enough car charging when I go on my trip in about 14 more days. Not as many as I would have liked, but still enough to at least, I, I just, I'm just trying to accomplish a goal. Oh, these look so nice at night. In the 
I'm assuming the Chatamo is working, but I'm not gonna use it. I'm in a hurry. I know Steph's been using my car for about a week now, and she's been charging at Chatamo periodically and getting high speeds at a lot of the newer Chatamos up in the 60s and 70s. Here at the Walmart Supercenter in Bushnell, Florida, I never get those speeds off the Chatamo, and I am in a hurry, so I need to break out the big guns. That is right. The adapter. I need it. Something I don't need all the time. As a matter of fact, I got a funny story to tell you. Well, it's not funny, haha, -ha, but a funny story. Oh, so Steph has been borrowing my car, as I just said. And she tried using the adapter a couple times. It has worked for her pretty good but she also didn't really want to use the adapter all the time so anytime she's seen a Chatamo she did try it and in the Orlando area a lot of the CCS's were broken and the Chatamo pumps actually saved her she didn't need the adapter because the adapter wouldn't work because the CCS's were broken but the Chatamo was working on all these cars were trying to charge nobody could charge but she could charge. It, it, I don't know. It's funny to me. As usual, it is working. The adapter from Electway, six pence, AA crane, wherever you purchase it, it is working perfect. Speeds are starting to slowly climb up as usual. It is definitely gonna be a rough week. We move the RV again on this coming Monday. We come back here to Wildwood area. We stay only for one week. Then we move back to Disney area for two weeks. And then to another campground next to Disney for 21 days, I believe. And then we're supposed to move like 75 miles south. And that's way far away from work. So I don't know how we're gonna do it. It's just there's so many people from up north coming down for the winter that all the campgrounds are starting to get clogged up. It's, it's just that time of year. And uh, not only that, I'm planning this road trip that I gotta kind of figure in the moving days. It's gonna be kind of hectic. It's gonna be fun and exciting, and it's gonna be an adventure, but it is gonna be hectic. Gosh, I hope that uh, when I'm on the trip, I get speeds like this constantly, at least until the battery heats up. Here in Florida, it's been in the 70s at night now. It's cooling down a little bit. It's been like 77, between 71 degrees and 77 degrees at night. And then in the daytime, yeah, it heats up to about 85, between 85 and 89. But it is starting to cool off and feeling a lot more like fall here in Florida. And I'm assuming the further north you go, it's even gonna get colder. So it should really help my battery stay cool on a long drive. Fingers crossed that, uh, it's going to stay cool because uh, I don't think this, this charger here is, or not, not the charger, but this adapter is really going to give me much troubles on the trip. I actually think it's going to work, I'm going to guess 95% of the time. It may not work 100% of the time, but I bet you at least 95% of the time this thing's going, going to work. And for the times it doesn't, I'm going to get some, so some firmware, some software, some firmware made so it does work. I am back in town in Wildwood and these are the old pumps that we used to have and they wrapped them all up, put them all away and uh, are getting ready to pull these out of here because they put some new ones in. Now I was here during the daytime today and they had these all opened up. I didn't want to record because they were getting them all installed but they said these are actually older units and they had to put some new equipment inside but they're really nice looking. They look brand new, but I guess Duke Energy is uh, using older equipment and just making them look new again. I don't know, they look brand new to me, but these new units that are gonna be going in are BTCP, what? BTC power, okay. The adapter should work on them, I'm assuming. 
we're going to have another one down here. Yeah. Looks like they're going to have tap to pay. Hopefully the app will also work. 480 volts. Yeah, looking forward to when these go active. When I was talking to the guys today that were doing it, said they still have to put the equipment over here. It's That's all still got to go in. And we're looking at two to three months before these things are ready to go. It's still going to be a while. But I did also find out something new too. These are not going to be the only pumps here in Wildwood, Florida. Now we've had these for many years now, but they never work. You know, those old ones down there rarely worked. In fact, they were been broken since 2023 Thanksgiving time. And uh, they've been, so it's nice to see them doing this. But supposedly there's two other pumps going in at some business here in Wildwood, Florida. I don't know if it's at the parking garage next to those uh, other chargers that are down there by, uh, oh God, what's the company? Blink. They have some Blink 1772s. So there may be some uh, decent fast chargers going in there also. Be that's, that's just what these guys said. I have no idea where they're going. It, it, or even if they they said that they're already put in they're just not it's going to be five months before they're active also i need to find out where those are located they're not on none of the apps and these guys here didn't tell me where they were but at the moment i do know where these ones are and we got about two more months and they should be active i don't know why it takes so long they're here they could probably install this stuff here within a week these should be up this month but it's not gonna happen. We just have to wait. Decent little cheap lunch, inexpensive. But I have a feeling the stuff I'm gonna be doing throughout the day is not gonna be that inexpensive the rest of the stuff I have to do throughout the day not that didn't make any sense or it could not be that much I don't know really not planning much I'm thinking about a Ben and Jerry's one ice cream probably costs more than an entire meal that stuff's getting crazy there is something that could cost a little bit of money other than just ice cream I actually think I what I'm going to do is Steph stuck in a truck is going to be home in about an hour or two, possibly. And I'm seriously thinking about doing a whole video about what it was like to drive this car, the Nissan Leaf, use Chatamo and the adapter for a whole week while her car was in the shop. Now, I was pretty lucky because I'm a truck driver. I just stayed at work and just kept working while she used the car. But I'm curious what her thoughts are if it... Uh, was equal to her Chevy Bolt. Did she really miss her Chevy Bolt because she just didn't like the Nissan Leaf? Or were there some things that she liked about it and some things she didn't like about it? I don't know. I think that might be what the next video is. I think I'm gonna get home, set the camera up and uh, get her on camera and noted, documented of what a non Nissan Leaf person's thoughts are you know, people that actually, you know, you can get different thoughts from someone that drives gas that hops in it. They'll, they'll think something different. But somebody that does drive an electric car, just a different brand, make and model, that should be pretty interesting. She's, she's never really told me anything about what she liked and didn't like yet. So it, I am, I'm curious. And I think I, I should find out along with you guys. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to unplug. I'm at 85%. My tummy's still full. I'll grab a Ben and Jerry's, go home and set up and wait for her. And if you want to see what she says, what it's like to use the adapter for a week. And uh, if she had any issues with the Nissan Leaf and things she hated, tune into that next video. You, you might need to subscribe that that little button down here, I think it is. You might need to click that so you get notified. I, I mean, I would if I was curious and I am curious. So I'm going to subscribe to my own channel. Until the next time, thanks for tuning in. Peace out, everybody.